the physical impact of trauma, it affects our brain architecture, our neural pathways, our brain waves, our neural transmitters, hormones, toxic elimination, nervous system, immune system, and cellular change. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, and the thing is, we, we, we need basic information. We don't need education. We just need the real basic information, the truthful information, because education has been has been compromised. And, and you know that. And so if we're going to build community, we need to first start with the foundation of the truth. So we need to start with with, with the know our value, and that's the know our bodies. We'll kind of give people a How many minutes do we have before we start? Um, we're live now, so we're just going to kind of give people a chance to show up, okay. get acclimated, and then we'll go from there. So... Go ahead and let me know when you're when you're ready. Who me? Yep, I'm ready. All right, all right. Uh, thank you, everybody, um, for you know coming here today to um, fellowship and health and wellness Mondays. We have a special guest here um, today that you know I really want everybody here to to take the time to to really 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 pull in with us. Um, have this conversation um, so we can try to get to the bottom or, or, or get to the start of what is mental health. Uh, I'm not walking into this conversation acting like I know anything. I'm here to learn. I'm, I'm here to I'm here to address issues with, you know, with the black community. I'm, I'm here to address issues with myself. Um, I'm here to fellowship with the people in the network to make sure that we're we're, we're having these conversations in order to to educate one another in a, in, in a means that we understand. Um, I don't want us to talk at one another. I want us to talk with one another. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our special guest today. He goes by the name of Alfred White. Um, what can I say um, about this man? Uh, he is the founder of the League of the Extraordinary People. Um, served uh, 38, uh, actually he's experienced nearly 38 years of homelessness. Um, uh, I believe I, I'm I, from what I'm reading with your bio, I, I, I see a story about you swallowing a fourth ounce of cocaine in 2004, only nine days after being released from prison, which nearly almost caused death. Um, you awoke paralyzed and when, and when you, and that was when you made the decision to, to seek help for this his, for your history of addiction. Since then, you have since received the master, your master's degree in Christian ministry with an emphasis in Christian counseling and has dedicated his life to helping others heal. Alfred's past adverse childhood experiences now manifest in his body as several chronic health conditions, including liver, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome. He is a, he is a subject matter ex expert and a licensed mental health therapist. Wow. <laughs> That's a that's a crazy introduction. Yeah, uh, I have liver cancer and fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and irritable bowel syndrome, and and that's from adverse childhood experiences. Mm. So, with that being said, let's let's just get right to it. Um, you're a subject matter expert. What 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 does that define that? In your in your own words, define that. What does that mean to you when it comes to as childhood childhood experiences? Meaning that I grew up in, in adverse babyhood experiences, which in and, and the result accumulated into adverse childhood experiences that has compromised my immune system, that has caused me to have uh, fibromyalgia, liver cancer, chronic fatigue, and IBS. And so a subject matter expert is somebody who's been through everything. I went through the addiction and I went through the the uh, the jails, the institutions, uh, the hustling, man, just the, the lies, man, you know, the 
the fake schools, the, the whole community. I just, I guess we just don't really understand how we're impacted as people of color when it comes down to health and wellness. In actuality, health and wellness is the way that they got into our lives to be able to compromise our immune systems. And so what happens is it starts in the household because the community members that are living in that house, household have been impacted by the environment and has been impacted by the community through discrimination, substandard schools, historical trauma, substandard wages, you know, poverty, you know, poor water, poor food, you know, structural racism. There's just so much here that impacts and compromises us. So not only is the environment, the community and the household, so where do you go from there? Absolutely. And, and so in actuality, what they did to the black population is actually created us as a cash crop for their social justice institutions. So you look at the criminal justice, you look at health care, you look at education, and you look at uh, personal finance, and, and we're under the gun in all those departments. And the reason why is because they use us in order to be able to fuel the economy. And so we're just a cash crop. We're just like weed or corn or anything like that. You know, every year there's a new level of young, young people of color growing up and coming out here into the world. And we've been basically, we've been set up. Absolutely. So with that being said, I'm, from what I'm reading is, is uh, the black community uh, roughly constitutes 12% of the United States population. Um, we are absolutely overrepresented in high in high risk populations as far as uh, what we call health and wellness or mental health. Um, how do we create or develop mechanisms that counteract our everyday trauma that we experience as far as those aspects? What what are what are the little things? Where can we start even within our homes? Um, you know, as far as tactics, you know, develop develop developmental tactics that we can teach our children that they can t in turn pass down to their children? Where, how, like, how do we start and where sure. do we start with that? So, so Dre, you know, where we start is like we're starting tonight and, and in the future when we get to discussing the three realms of ACEs and we get to discussing developmental trauma and the impact of trauma it has on, on our neurobiology. The physical impact of trauma, it, it affects our brain architecture, our neural pathways, our brain waves, our neurotransmitters, hormones, toxic elimination, nervous system, immune system, and cellular change. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, and the thing is, we, we, we need basic information. We don't need education. We just need the real basic information, the truthful information, because education has been, has been compromised. And, and you know that. And so if we're going to build community, we need to first start with the foundation of the truth. So we need to start with, with, with the know our value, and that's the know our bodies. And, and know our bodies is to understand, you know, what the blood is for, what oxygen is for, you know, what nutrition is about, what's our nervous systems about, what's our, what's our triune brains live like, uh, about. So when, we, when they send us to treatment, do you know that they're treating us the other way around? We was created from the bottom up, not from the top down. So when I say from the bottom up, meaning that we have a reptilian brain, we have a mammalian brain, and then we have a prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex doesn't start to develop until the age of 12, and it's not fully developed until the age of 25. So, so what's been working all those times before that has been your amygdala and your hippocampus and your thalamus. And so we don't even understand enough about the biology of the body or the brain to even understand how we can even have mental health problems. You know, it's not mental health that's the problem, it's the environment that we live in and, and, and the oppression that we've experienced. And so we become resilient because we are resilient. You know, our, our, our melatonin is what makes us so viable and so strong, you know? And so we don't, we don't understand it because they don't wanna let us know how, how much of a king and a queen we really are. But so now you see during this, this, this uh, political race, how everything's coming out. And so we've been running around here worshiping man and, and that's, not the, that, that's not the way that we're supposed to go with this. And so we need to start asking questions and we need to start doing some research. And, and so I have a, 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 I have a composition of, of a plethora of resources here because when I got liver cancer, they told me that 
I needed a liver transplant, and this was in 2018. And when I asked, when I when I asked the doctor, doctor said, I said, wow. And and I don't even want to mention the hospital. I don't even want to go that route. But when they told me that, and and I asked her about a test that I'd taken the day before, and then she didn't know that I had even been to the hospital to take the test. I said, well, this is not the hospital for me because she didn't even look at my record. She didn't even look at my chart before I even came in here. So I need to get out of here. That's for real, right? And so the next doctor I went to, he said, well, we don't have to get a liver transplant, but we can try something else when you call it a Y90. And that's where they stuck radiation up in me because I, I didn't want any chemo because chemo had killed my mom and killed a lot of other people in my life that was close to me, some mentors that I had when I was at Union Gospel Mission after I swallowed that quarter ounce of crack cocaine and died and was paralyzed. You know, only nine days out of prison. Yeah, I got TBI injuries. I've been stabbed. I've been hit in the head with pistols. I got two holes in my head. I've had my jaw broke numerous times. My nose broke numerous times, man. I that almost kicked my spleen out of me. And this just didn't happen in Seattle. I took my show cross country, Dre. Mm -hmm. You know, everywhere I went, man, Alfred showed up. Or actually, you know, the street name was old school. You know what I mean? And so I hung around those streets long enough to, that's the reason why I call myself a lived, lived, uh, lived experience professional is, is because I've actually been there and done that. I've been through all those things. I've, I've played Superman. You know, I've, I've lived out of McDonald bathrooms and sleeping on park benches and bus benches and airports and stuff. This didn't come like I just got this, man. You know, this is something I had to struggle through. And so we need to start giving our, our, our children and our adults because a lot of the adults nowadays have, have chronic illnesses and they don't know where these illnesses come from. And it comes from our nutrition. Do you know that it takes over 70 minerals a day for us to consume in our bodies in order for our neurotransmitters and that's, that's in our blood, the minerals in our blood to be able to, to communicate with our body? I do they not. Do. Yeah, right, man. And that, so they don't ever tell you this. And then we got another nerve. It's called the vagus nerve. And it says 80% information from our bodies to our to our, to our brains. And the brain sends 20% 20, 20 information from our brains back down to our body. So it's a two-way street. We don't really have emotional problems. We have a hormonal problem. We have a problem with cortisol and adrenaline. It's our physiology that's been compromised. It's not our mental health. You can't you can't tell us from the top down because what's wrong is in our physiology. That's in our reptilian and our mammalian brain. You can't even talk to that part. But what you got to do is you got to treat it better and acknowledge it better. You know what I mean? So they created this so they can create some, some revenue stream, man. And that's all that is, man. When you look at 100 years ago, we're going through right now what they went through after the 1918 Spanish flu. And if you look back to Howard Zinn's book, A People's History of the United States, and you look at part one on YouTube, and you look at how what they did back then, just like they're doing now with these private securities and stuff, the Rockefellers and, and, and uh, uh, Kaiser and all those, they had company towns and they was going around and, and and they were just taking advantage of the people. They wasn't paying them any livable wages like they're doing now. They don't have an environment to sleep in. The, the water and stuff is better is better then than it is now. And the food was better then than it is now. Do you know that we have less than 12% uh, minerals in, in the ground today when they go to growing food? And that's the reason why so many people are dying from all these different chronic illness and diseases because of other toxins that they be putting in the food. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely gave me some homework. So what I'm hearing is, is that from just from hearing you talk is, is, is minorities are actually disconnected from the science of oh, they don't even, they don't research or read nothing, man. health and wellness. We're always, you know, you know, trapped up. Our mental health is up here. Is something wrong with you in your head. It's all, but we're actually really, really disconnected from the education of it. And just from talking to you in 20 minutes, I probably probably should get off here and go read some books. So definitely, oh. definitely thank you. Thank you for that. Um, with that being said, how, with your experience, 
what are some of the what is what is this, some of the stigmas that you've experienced you know coming up you know through your life about mental health you know with with your journey within the within the, the health you know the world because the reason i asked that is because i have myself advanced kidney disease i've 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 received a transplant i got a transplant in 2014 and i'm still living with that same transplant some of the things that you mentioned you know as far as your journey being in hospitals speaking to different doctors, doctors telling you anything. I've had my own journeys, you know, dealing with, you know, that type of that type of stuff. So the entire time, you know, I was always worried about my physical health, my physical health, my physical health. I got to eat right. I got to get better. I got to drink water. I got to change the way, you know, I move and, and some of the things that I'm doing, you know, recreationally, you know, on an everyday basis. Um, I totally disconnected myself from the science of, you know, health and, and, and disconnected that, the mental part to my physical health because my ment my physical health was deteriorating my mental health. And I did not acknowledge that, you know, number one, as a minority black man, you know, dealing with trauma every single day, you know, another aspect that, you know, that we have to go through. I, I, I disconnected the mental health from my physical health. How do we realign that? And, 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 Back to my first question is, is what are some of the stigmas that you faced as a black man coming up in your health journey? Oh, wow, man, you, you know, <clears throat> this is systemic, man. This happened before I got here, man. This happened at the inception, man. This happened during the domestication and the dream of the planet, man. Mm. And, and, and so when I say that, man, it's only because I, like he was fighting for my life and, and, and I was, and so, I have a master's in, in mental health. And so I created a continuum care program for an addiction hospital that actually uh, made the most successful in the 75 year history of the hospital. And actually I created a program that, that people could access worldwide, globally. And I have the letters for that. I actually, uh, they used my bio for the Union Gospel Missions first fundraiser. They raised over a million dollars using my bio you know what we need to start looking out for is these nonprofits that 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 you got that have these treatment centers. Now that's what you need to be talking about. These programs in these criminal justice places, these these places over that in these healthcare institutions, just like they just outed Odessa Brown with the University of Washington. Now she she because when we go in there and talk to them people and have to tell them how we feel, then it's always the angry black man. But no, they don't tell us about the original plan that you had about making the original black man who wants to keep the hospital open for, for the mother people, man. You know, because they're doing treatment in addiction and around mental health that they're not even telling the black community about. You know, and, and here's another thing is, we don't have problems with anxiety and, and, and depression we have problems in our physiology that's causing hormonal secretions that cause us to feel anxious or cause us to feel depressed. It ain't like we got a mental health problem. We don't have a mental health problem. We got an environmental problem. We got a problem with honesty. We got a problem with grace. We got a problem with mercy. We got a problem with truth. You know what I mean? And we need to start doing some more research, especially in healthcare, because when you when you get to talking about our healthcare. You need to know why we need to drink certain kind of water. We need to know why that you need certain kind of foods. You need to know why there ain't no whole foods in the black neighborhoods and they're all are in the white neighborhoods. And reason why we got Safeway and Walmart and Fred Myers in our neighborhoods and these community stores. You need to really understand what sugar is all about and what it's doing to your cells and how it's messing up your communication. You need to understand why that wheat and that corn and that milk and that dairy and that cheese ain't no good for you. We wasn't created to eat that stuff, you know, and you need to ask yourself why they didn't take none of the healers from Africa and bring them over here. Why did you guys, what did you guys do to take us that quick and, and bring us over here that you didn't bring no medicine or nothing? All you want to do is go back and take the gold and take all the minerals out of the land and then come over here and charge us for it and make us the prime suspects of all this stuff here, man, you know? And then what's gonna happen when they turn the lights out? What, what you gonna do when they turn the electricity out? We just sit up here and we've let them program us and they've taken away our strengths. Wow, that's what we need. And, and, and that's why we're here, honestly, is to not just talk about 
you know, mental health from a mental perspective. You're breaking down the science of it. We right. need we need classroom structure, you know, you know, week by week, like mental mental health Mondays in order to talk about, you know, specifically different categories of of of, of health and wellness that 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 we can understand without receiving an abundance of information that we can't re regurgitate to our children. Right, man. That stuff that they teach us, man, doesn't have no value, man. If you don't know your value, man, you know, check this out, man. We so what's the best card? What's the what's the what's the nicest card? What's your favorite card, Dre? My favorite car? Yeah. All of all time? Yeah. Like that I've owned or just in just, just, no, just your favorite car. What's your favorite car, man, that you had and you would just just oh, it would just be the thing to be. Oh man, I had a I had a ninety-three Caprice. Bubble Caprice. I love that car. <laughs> yeah. so, so here's the deal. Everybody in America got a 93 Caprice or, or, or 2021 Rose or Bentley. You check this out. So we, we show up at the showroom. Dre is giving me the keys. You know what I mean? And, boy, I can't wait to get in that car and drive it, man. You know what I mean? I'm just doing all this and stuff, excited. And Dre give me the keys, man. You know what I mean? I get in and they said, man, how, how'd I get out the lot, Dre? You told, show me the way out. And I jump in that joint and burn rubber. And, man, I'm mashing. But check this out. I ain't got no book. I don't know what kind of gas it used. I don't know what the buttons are for. So that's the same thing with our parents, man. You know, we had kids, man, and we raised their kids, but we was born, we never got a chance to be raised. So we don't even understand, our parents don't even understand the process of what needs to be done in order for us to be raised. Remember the doulas and stuff was still over in Africa. We don't even have, we don't even have no way to even raise our babies without asking them how. Absolutely. And you know what I really appreciate that, about that? Is, is I preach all the time, you know, and I'm talking about myself. I have two teenagers in the home. It took me a while to realize that, you know, preaching at them one to 100 or preaching at them A to Z, they don't really receive information like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't learn mm -hmm. like we did. Mm -hmm. We as adults and quote unquote old people also have to evolve in the way that we teach also have to evolve in the way that we regurgitate information to our youth. We can't expect them to look at us and, and, and just receive the information how we received it. We, the earth has changed. The, our society has changed. These kids learn. They don't learn one to 100. They learn in networks. They're born in networks. By the mm -hmm. time they're two or three years old, they've either touched an iPad. They're playing with tablets. By the time they're nine or 10, they probably played with your cell phone. They teach themselves how to type. So the learning process and the learning curve really has changed, you know, right before our eyes with this virtual shift. If we don't evolve with that, you know, as far as putting out the information and getting, you know, specific information to our people, th th then, then we're failing ourselves. I, I really think that racism messed up. They messed up in the last, I'd say, year or so by allowing black people to build when black people say oh we got to build our own neighborhoods we got to build our own neighborhoods we haven't had the physical ability to do that forever because they'll just keep gentrifying us out of it but where they can't gentrify it is right here we've been able to develop federal way black collectives develop young professionals of seattle develop one institutions build networks build quote unquote, virtual neighborhoods where black people can share fellowship, pass information to one another, pass resources to one another, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it has yet to be gentrified. This is an opportunity for us to step forward as a society and be the curators of culture. Black people are the curators of culture. We develop music. We bring style. We bring panaz. We bring, we bring it to the table. And this is our opportunity with these networks, developing these networks to do so. We're starting to create neighborhoods right before our own eyes, and we don't even realize it. So, so let me share something with you. I've been on this march since, God, 2017, man. And, and, and so here's the deal. How come there ain't no black uh, uh, 
off and went on the silos in King County. Mm. Uh, I'll come all up and down rain here, man. They got DESC, Catholic Community Services, Novos, and all these different places with these with these nonprofits, and then breaking in money. You hear me breaking in money? Sound Mental Health made, made over sixty million one year, and and guess who who, who they made it off of? People of color, the BIPOC community. Absolutely. Yeah, the BIPOC community. Yeah, and, and so we need to do something about this because nonprofits is an article out, and I because I don't want it to say it came out of my mouth, but they say nonprofits support white supremacy. I, I would deal. doubt that. I I, I can tell they, you they something. got the they got the curriculums and they got the buildings. You understand what I'm saying? And they not let no black people uh, write curriculums and not let no black people buy buildings. They're not letting no black people even get any close. We're close to near it, even talking about uh, giving out any money for grants to build buildings. You know, we know how to buy land. As a matter of fact, we got some land over in Federal Way that that's what we want to do. We have 1.5 acres and we want to create a black health and wellness silo, residential program with, with behavioral health on the bottom, but actuality, it'd be a center of excellence. It won't be a behavior help. It'd be a center of excellence, and we'll resurrect our own people out of the muck and the mud of this bad information that we've been getting for generations. You know, I got a whole plethora of feel on this, and I'm real adamant about this because this is what's killing our people. Oh, the resiliency is the fact that we've overcome slavery and we didn't get a chance to vote until 1965. And we're still standing tall. We still elected a black president. So we, 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 we just need to learn our values, to know our values and to be our values. And we got to stop. Uh, we got to get away from these cell phones and TVs and computers and stuff and take breaks in nature. We need to understand our bodies. Our bodies can regenerate any and every organ on ourselves except for our teeth. Mm. Heavy. Yes, yes, yes. All right, sir. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for 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 fellowshipping with me, um, fellow fellowshipping with the Federal Way Black Collective. Um, we're definitely gonna pull, pull it back again every Monday. Um, same time, 6.30, um, to get to this. Uh, thank, and and I, I also want to say, point out that you did correct me publicly. I, I, I said mental health Mondays. You're right. I want to make sure that, that you, you reiterate that point and, 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 and correcting me that we need to get away from that stigma of yeah. calling it mental health. And, and, and please explain why. We, we don't have a mental health problem. We, we have a problem with the information that they that, and the title that they gave it, causing it to be mental health. See, that, that further exacerbates our, our autonomatic nervous system. Our autonomatic nervous system and our central nervous system, our autonomatic nervous system has neuroception. Neuroception means it's just like a homeland security, you know, around us. And so it picks up on people. So when you be talking about vibes and stuff, yeah, we, there's more to learn about this and we'll, We'll unfold this information in the weeks coming, Dre. Okay, but there's more to learn about our autonomic nervous system, the vagus nerve, our sympathetic, our parasympathetic, you know. Yeah, there's a lot more about this information, our brains and our bodies that we can even even to touch right now. And so I'd like to also uh offer people to ask questions too next time. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll definitely incorporate that into our next session uh on the following monday but thank you i want to thank everybody uh for for tapping into health and wellness mondays um uh, make sure that you follow the federal federal way black collective as we will begin uh to expand and do big things um much appreciated um also follow alfred white um go ahead and shout out your social media and and uh um links if you have them yeah, well, you can follow us on the, on Facebook at the League of Extraordinary People, or also at we also have the League of Extraordinary People Book Club too, a book study that we do once a month, the last Monday of each each month at nine a.m. And the book is called Emotional Sobriety by Tion Dayton. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And with that being said, 
signing out.